Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, could everyone stand and, and salute the flag with me? Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Are there any changes to the agenda tonight? There is one. We have um, two agendas that we're working from. We have the regular meeting and then the special meeting agenda. And so the special meeting agenda only has one item that's listed on the special agenda as 6.1. So we'll merge the two together and that will become item 6.3 on the regular agenda. Okay, do I have council's approval for the agenda? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, roll call please. Councilman Atkinson? Aye. Councilman Ramirez? I'm sorry, Councilman Ramirez? I'll have a light of my microphone. I don't know if she can hear me or not. I can hear you, Adam, but I can't hear anybody else. Can you hear me now? Yes. Why well, So, I'm sorry. Councilman Atkinson, you made the motion? Yes, I did. Okay. Councilman Ramirez? Any? Yes, sir. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Councilman Singleton? Councilman Singleton? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Horn? Mayor Pro Tem Horn? Aye. Mayor Ramsey? Mayor Ramsey. I also vote aye. The motion uh, passed. <clears throat> we'll go to item number two, awards presentations, appointments and proclamations. We have none. Number three, citizens comments. This section of the agenda allows members of the public to address the city council on any item within the jurisdiction of the council. Members of the council when recognized by the mayor should come forward to the lectern, identify themselves, use the microphone, and compliment, um, compliments are normally limited to three minutes. In accordance with state open meeting laws, no action will be taken by the council this evening and all items will be referred to staff for a follow-up. Is there anybody uh, would like to address the council? Mayor Ramsey, I do have one comment. Okay. This is from Greg Cody. He says, I would like to thank the city of Kalinga Public Works for the outstanding job they do in our city. On behalf of my family, we are very grateful for all the assistance they have provided without asking to replace one of our family memorial trees in front of the museum that was previously destroyed by a vehicle accident. And that's it. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, Cody. And that's all, I guess. Okay. Uh, public hearings. We have one. We adopt uh, City Council Resolution number 4007, approving proceedings to finance, uh, proceeding to finance and refinance improvements to the city municipal water system and to refinance improvements to the city municipal wastewater system. Approve issuance of revenue bonds by the Kalinga Public Finance Authority for such purposes and approve uh, related documents and official actions and adopt uh, Kalinga Public Financing Authority Resolution Number PA, PFA 21 01, authorizing the instance uh, and sale of revenue bonds to finance and refinance improvements to the City of Kalinga. 
municipal water systems and the refinance improvements to the city's municipal wastewater system, approving related documents and uh, official actions. Thank you. So our financial services director, Jasmine Baines, is uh, connected via Zoom so she can um, briefly introduce this item and it is a public hearing. So then just make sure that you open, open the okay. uh, public hearing. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Talking or? No, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The item before you um, is a resolution of the City of Kalinga and the Kalinga Public Financing Authority um, in a joint uh, agenda item and two separate resolutions to be passed by Council tonight um, after the public hearing is closed. Um, this, uh, this particular item relates to the water infrastructure uh, bonds to be issued known as, I believe 2001 uh, water, uh, sorry, 2021 uh, series B bonds. Um, and the series A bonds that are before you are the refinancing of the 2012 water and wastewater bonds. And so we, um, the municipal advisor, uh, Bud Levine and the team, the bond team has a presentation, which we're gonna go through fairly quickly. And so um, at the end of it all, um, if council has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. So um, I, I don't know what the procedure is, if you need to open the hearing and then have the presentation or uh, we can go right into the presentation. Go ahead and go into the presentation and we'll do the public hearing right after. Okay, but are you connected? I believe so, yes. Am I, can you hear me? Yes, bud, we can hear you. Okay, let me get the video started too. Okay, and uh, I've got Rob Pankrantz here uh, uh, with me from Will Panson who will uh, post the, I see he has that up on the, on the screen. Uh, we're here tonight to talk about the uh, issue for 2021 of the Colinga Public Financing Authority. There are going to be two series, uh, series uh, 2021A, uh, uh, which is a refunding of the 2012 existing water and wastewater bonds uh, that we will refund. And in addition, issue a series B, which will be for a, uh, a new water project. The Series A bonds will be issued as taxable bonds. The Series B will be issued as tax exempt. Go to the next slide, please. And just to give you a little background, uh, the Coalinga Public Financing Authority is a joint powers authority uh, that's uh, used to issue bonds to support city initiatives. In 2012, they did issue the 12,830,000 in bonds to finance water and wastewater improvements. Uh, and now be, due to attractive interest rates, uh, the authority can refinance the 2012 bonds on a taxable basis to achieve interest savings. Quick uh, uh, explanation of why they have to be done taxable. Uh, in, the bonds are not actually callable until 2022. We used to be able to issue advanced refundings on a tax exempt basis, but due to the new tax bill that was passed in 2017, you can't do advanced refundings tax exempt. So if the interest rates are attractive enough on a taxable basis, uh, it's recommended that you, you go ahead and not wait because interest rates could go up substantially between now and 2022. So therefore we're recommending doing these 2012 bonds on a taxable basis to say compliant. Next slide. Uh, brief uh, history on July 29th uh, of the last year, the city increased water and sewer rates uh, pursuant to a 218 procedure. That's was to bring your financials into compliance with uh, requirements of meeting all of your expenses and providing uh, debt service coverage for your existing bonds and to produce enough excess to uh, support doing a new project. Um, so as I said a minute ago, we're going to talk about financing a $7 million new project and then also refinancing, refinancing the 2012 bonds. Uh, on October 15th, as you may remember, the city passed a resolution authorizing uh, the proceedings to move forward, hiring the team, and that brings us to today. 
Now, um, I, we had originally planned to maybe have uh, the uh, Oppenheimer, who's the underwriter, present a, a market update, but why don't we hold on to that until we go through the presentation. And I'll just give you a few brief words on that. And then if there's any questions about it, then uh, Nikki Tallman and Dan Shaw from Oppenheimer can walk you through it in a more detailed uh, way. Next slide. This just shows how municipal bonds are priced, uh, basically, and we can go into this in more detail. Uh, the taxable bonds are priced uh, at a spread, which means an increase in rate to the AAA rated treasury uh, notes and bonds. In the, uh, in the case of a 30 year a bond, you would take the 30 year rate uh, that exists on any given day, and then you would add an additional amount uh, to that to cover for the fact that the issuer is not the AAA government, and that comes up with the yield that would apply to that particular, any particular maturity. So you can see this is not just the number that's picked out of air, it is based on a basic formula that is then used to uh, sell the bonds. Same thing with the tax exempt market, they use the municipal market data, which is the MMD, very similar to a listing of the treasury rates. These are no, though tax exempt, same idea. You would take the 30 year uh, MMD, for example, and you would add a spread to that and that would get you the rate for that particular maturity. And that's done through all the maturities. And then that's how you get to the interest rates uh, for, the, for the bonds. Next slide. This shows you, very interesting slide. This shows you a 30 year treasury history. Briefly, if you notice the left-hand side is 1990, the right-hand side is 2020. You don't have to know a lot about bonds to know that those interest rates are, are going down. And you can see that they reached an all-time low in 2020. They're not quite at their all-time low, but at extremely low rates that provide for a good opportunity for the refunding and financing the new project. Um, next slide. This is the MMD history comparable to what was just on the previous slide for the treasury. The gray is the 10 year, the blue is the 30 year, and you can see how those two since uh, 2010 have, uh, have trended down and again are at very attractive rates for accomplishing what we want to do tonight. Next slide. Uh, this will just be a highlights of, you can read this, uh, of the market so far. Basically what it shows that we had an all time low earlier in the year, um, uh, at the all time uh, high. Um, um, I'm sorry, this shows this on the, on the MMD shows the rate in, in December of 2020 versus the rate now. And you can see that the rates have come up a little bit, but, but not very much in the municipal market. You can see in the treasury rates, they've come up about 20 basis points, a little bit more. Still, the point is they're very, very low rates. Okay, now let's get into the meat of the issue, which is I'm gonna take the, uh, the new project bonds first. These are the revenue bonds of 2021 uh, for the water project financing. These will be done again tax exempt. We plan on issuing 6,375,000 in par amount of bonds. The bonds will be sold under a technique of selling them at a premium, which means that the coupon rate will be a little bit higher, but the actual yield that they're sold to the investor will be lower. The investor pays more than par for the bonds as a result. That gives us extra project money uh, as a result of this kind of uh, structure and allows you to issue fewer bonds than you would if they were doing just straight par bonds. So you see as a result of that, that produces $7 million in new project funds. It covers the cost of issuance of those bonds and um, that produces the 7 million necessary for the project. Next slide. This shows you the debt service that will be um, involved in, in, um, in this issue. So you can see that the interest rates, uh, the coupon stays the same at 4%. And the interest rates go, these are estimated interest rates. These are based on the market as of uh, January 19th. Uh, this shows the interest rates as starting at below 1% and going to 2.67%. That produces a debt service schedule that is roughly around 340,000 a year, except for the last three years, where then it goes up to a million for those three. And you can see that the total uh, uh, debt service payments are 12,142,000. Uh, 
for the six million three hundred and seventy five thousand in uh, in bonds that uh, that would be issued. By the way, the the average interest rate for these this particular uh, series that is showing uh, these rates ends up being a tax exempt all in estimated uh, rate of three point three five percent, extremely low. To give you a comparison, when we did this this similar type of uh, issue in two thousand twelve, the interest rates were in excess of five percent. Next slide. Uh, this now is the Series A. These are the revenue bonds that are going to be taxable and will refund the 2012 water and wastewater bonds. In this case, we're issuing a par amount of 11,945,000. Now, the requirements of the, uh, the rules governing uh, 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 refunding bonds, if there's any money on hand to the benefit of the 2012 bonds, that must be brought into the refunding and used as part of the proceeds to pay down the existing bonds. That allows you to issue lower par amount of bonds to accomplish the refunding. In this case, there was a prior reserve fund of 826,000, combined prior reserve funds, I'm sorry, of 826,000 between the water and the, and the wastewater. And there's also 700,000 in unused project funds that remained in the account and therefore those are being brought in as part of the refunding. That gives you a total of 13,471 to apply to the refunding. The amount necessary to put into escrow to refund the existing bonds is 13,078,000. The rest of it is cost of issuance and that gets you the whole uh, issue then refunded. And next slide. Uh, this shows you the debt service that is going to be uh, involved in the refunding bonds. And you can see that, the, um, that uh, because this is a taxable uh, a bond issue, we don't have the ability to do these, or in most cases, to do these as premium. The buyers in, in, uh, in, uh, in taxable, uh, like uh, uh, current uh, interest bonds, they, they like par bonds. Uh, and you can see the interest rate is going to go from 1%, this is all taxable now, 1% to 4.15. That gives you, a, again, this one, a total interest uh, cost, average interest cost of 3.57 taxable. You can see there's not a great deal of difference between the taxable and the tax exempt which only happens in unusual times in the marketplace, thus giving us a great opportunity to still be able to refund these at very attractive results using taxable. Um, the total uh, 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 interest payments, I'm sorry, the total debt service payments uh, that are involved will be 18,820,000 uh, for the 11,945,000 in bonds that are issued. Now let's take the next slide. And this is the slide I wanna send a little more time on because this is really what is the heart of what we're doing here. So as I said before, this is a combination, the series A or a combination of water and wastewater. So the wastewater pays its share of the debt service out of the wastewater enterprise fund and the uh, water uh, bonds part are paid, uh, the, the bonds are paid uh, also uh, the water uh, enterprises share is paid from that enterprise fund. Now let's take these one at a time. If you look over at the left uh, column, that is the water. You notice that the left column is the 2012 debt service for the water. That's the current amount of debt service that the water enterprise is paying every year. Total of uh, 17 million 988. The middle column is the estimated new bond debt service taxable uh, when we issue the new bonds. And if you'll notice, that total debt service is 15,152,747. That shows you your savings over the life of this issue will be 1,936,241. But I wanna point out that the first two years create very substantial savings. Uh, in the first year, you have 397,000 estimated. In the second year, 310,000. Now over on the right-hand side, I had put a note in that the savings in these first years, what might be used in combination with existing funds to purchase the water from the USBR that we, we know they, it, the, uh, the water enterprise has to do. 
uh, in discussion with, uh, with uh, Jasmine. She thinks it's more beneficial to the city and we agree uh, to use other funds to pay for the water and instead to use uh, these uh, excess funds in the early years to build up the reserves. So again, that's a choice that the city will make. The bottom line is uh, if these bonds uh, are, are sold at the estimated levels that we're talking about, it will produce a million nine thirty six two forty one uh, in, uh, in gross savings. Let's take a look at the wastewater. The wastewater, the current uh, uh, 2012 debt service is 5,422,225. The new debt service is estimated at 3,667,680,000. You can see that the savings are 1,754,546. And again, towards uh, building up reserves, the first two years produce uh, a substantially higher than the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the years. Um, 127 in the first year, 120 in the 120,000 in the second. I wanna point out, and we're gonna talk about net present value in a minute. When you're looking at the present value of savings, which the regulations require us to show you and look at, and there are certain standards that have to be met. Obviously a dollar in paid in 2021 is worth more than a dollar paid in 58, in, 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 in 2048. So uh, on, on that basis, that savings being, being uh, produced in the early years is much more valuable than the rest of the savings. The longer you go out, the less value those savings have, although they still have a, a, a strong value. One of the things we're, re and then the final thing on this, this table is the combined estimated savings. That's the combination of the two, because that's the way the debt service will actually be paid to the holders of the, of the bonds. They're not gonna care whether it came from the water or the wastewater, the city cares about that. But the investor is gonna be looking at the total payment they're gonna be receiving if they're a purchaser of the series A bonds. And you can see that the combined savings uh, there, again, total up 3,690,000 with 524,000 in the first year and 431,000 in the second. Now, one of the things we're required to show uh, uh, the council prior to uh, approving this is that it, that the savings meet the parameters of the debt management policy, which you're going to uh, be adopting, uh, I believe, on the consent calendar tonight. And that that uh, 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 policy requires that in refunding that you have a benchmark that you would like to achieve, which is three percent of the, that the net present value of savings would be 3% of the total amount of the bonds being refunded. Now, the gross savings, the actual cash flow savings are 3,690,000, as I just pointed out. But because the early savings and the later savings are worth a progressively different amount if you're looking at them in today's dollars, the present value of savings of that 3,600,000 is 2,708,000, again, you're still going to receive the 3 million nine, 3 million 690 in savings. But if you're calculating what the net present value is, or rather the present value is, it's 2 million 708,000. Now, remember, I mentioned that there's existing funds that are coming in, the 800,000 from the reserve, and then the 700,000 from the project. We have to deduct that out of the present value because that's really your own money coming in. And therefore, we don't use that when we're using, that's what we call it, the net present value of savings. And that amount is 1,188,818. So to review, you've got 3,690 in actual savings cash flow that comes in. You have a present value of that of 2,708,000. And you have a net present value backing out money that you existing that you have existing, and that produces 1,188,000. That's the number that is supposed to equal at least 3% of the outstanding bonds you're refunding. In fact, it results in 9.74% actually triple the amount that needed. This kind of a savings analysis and with a net present value of nine, almost 10% is considered an extremely favorable uh, type of, uh, of refunding to do. Next slide. Now, we also have other regulations that we have to show you. 
And this is when we're doing one bond issue, even though it's comprised of both the series A and the series B, and they both are being paid by the combination of either the sewer enterprise fund or the water enterprise fund. We have to show what the combined debt service of both the 2021A and 2021B is. That again is the refunding bonds that, we've, that we're doing in the taxable and the new project bonds that we're doing on a tax exempt basis. So here's the combined debt service. You can see that the total amount of principal that you're paying back is 18 million uh, uh, 320. The uh, debt service is 30 million 962 651. So now we're these are called the 5852.1 disclosures. The true, now th these are numbers, by the way, this is what our firm, Wolf Hansen, is required to provide. As your financial advisor, we're supposed to look at every, the projections that are being made, uh, particularly from when we have an underwriter, which we do have, what their estimate is of what the numbers are going to be. We look at it independently and we ag either agree or don't agree. And then we come to the final uh, number that we're willing to uh, state in this, in this table. These are our best estimates of what the, the, the uh, result of the combined issuance will look like uh, once it is priced and sold and, and closed. The true interest cost of the bonds appear to be a 3.42%. The financing charges, that's all the charges that are involved in the cost of issuance, all the fees, uh, insurance and surety bond uh, when that's used and the rating agency, all of those various costs, uh, a total of 593,000. The net proceeds to be, to be received uh, from the bonds after cost of issuance ends up being 18,561,333. Remember, that money will be used roughly 12 million to pay off the existing bonds and roughly 7 million for the new project. And then I think this was a question that was asked in the October meeting about, well, what would the total payments be for the bonds if we issue? Total payments over the life of the bonds are thirty million nine sixty two six fifty one. Next slide. Okay, these are two slides that you've seen before, but I want to emphasize a couple of points in them. These are the debt service coverage. This is the water enterprise, and there's one for the wastewater enterprise. These were prepared by Dan Bergman of, of IG Service. They were used in your rate case. Uh, that uh, I know I've seen these presentations made to you before. This is what the water enterprise would look like, both historically from 2017 through 2021, 20, and going forward on projections for the new uh, bond issue from 2021 through 2025. What I want you to look at is the, la the bottom two lines, the debt service coverage ratio and the excess cash after debt service. So after the revenues come in and all the expenses are applied, there's an amount that's left available to pay the bonds. And it's called the net revenue available for debt service. Then when you apply all the debt service that, are, that we are projecting from the refunding and the new money uh, project, uh, the, uh, the amount that, would, that, that uh, uh, will be paid out on that debt service then uh, leaves uh, an, an excess. That excess cash flow after debt service is 440,206 if you're looking at the 2022 year. Um, and you can see that the debt service coverage ratio, the one right above that is 1.76. Uh, I'm used 22 because that's the first, would be the first full year of uh, performance. Uh, if the bonds are uh, approved tonight and they are issued and you begin uh, uh, doing, uh, uh, being required to pay, to pay debt service. Uh, to put that in perspective, the 1.76, when the bonds are issued, they're gonna be issued with a debt service covenant, which means that you covenant, the city covenants, that you will always have sufficient revenues by charging the proper amount for the service to produce a 1.25 coverage. So uh, this clearly produces much more than that, that allows you to have excess revenues to use for other projects or for other uses, uh, but and at the same time keeps you well into compliance with the 125 covenant 
in the event that there are issues that come up that slow down revenues or that cause an increase in expenses, that's a good coverage number to protect the investor. Why is that important? Because when we get a rating on the bonds, that's one of the things that, that S&P, the rating agency, will look at. The higher the coverage, the higher the rating. The 1.76, and again, if you look at the other uh, numbers uh, uh, in here uh, for the subsequent years, uh, the well above the, uh, the, the 140 level, uh, should we think that this is going to give you somewhere in the neighborhood of a triple B plus or an A or an A minus rating? Uh, we're having the call with uh, S&P uh, coming up uh, in Monday, uh, and uh, we're, we're very hopeful that uh, that, that will uh, be the result. There's been some issues with S&P in the past where they have not been happy with the performance of the, of the city. This goes back years before Jasmine was here uh, and uh, caused some issues with S&P. Uh, we believe we have a good presentation to present to them that is going to uh, uh, allow them to uh, reinstitute a very strong rating. Uh, next slide. And now this is the debt uh, service coverage on the wastewater enterprise. And as you see, this particular uh, uh, enterprise actually has even better coverage than the uh, water enterprise uh, based on the, on the refunding. Uh, there's no new money that's needed uh, for, for, the, uh, for the sewer. Uh, so that all you're going to be doing is refunding the existing wastewater uh, 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 bonds. And you can see, if we look at that same 20, 2022 year, you've got a 3.04. Uh, so that, that will contribute uh, very significantly weigh and weigh in on the uh, rating agency when they're looking at the combination. Um, next slide. And now we've come to next steps. Uh, next steps would be assuming that you approve the two resolutions tonight. As I said, we're having our rating call on February 8th, which is Monday. Uh, right after that, we will expect to get the rating February 19th. We'll also get bond insurance and a surety bond. Let me just say something real quick about the surety bond. What that means, that surety bond replaces a debt service reserve. Normally in a bond issue, and for years this has been the case, you fund an additional amount of bond, you issue an additional amount of bonds to fund a cash debt service reserve held by the trustee in case there are any shortfalls in available revenue to make payments. It assures the investor that there is an initial amount of money that is going to be there available to pay debt service until the issuing entity, the city, can get their uh, things resolved to be able to continue uh, making their payments. Usually the, sh the reserve it represents one year's debt service. And I think if you saw that we do the combined debt service, it's, it was a million dollars a year. So you would have to issue an additional million in bonds and you would be paying interest on that million. That roughly is $30,000 a year in interest over 30 years is almost a million dollars you're paying uh, to have that million dollar reserve. Uh, the, in, the insurance, when they issue the insurance, will also issue a surety bond for a cost of approximately 30 to 40 or $50,000 one-time fee. And that covers that $1 million reserve policy for the life of the issue. Very attractive and we're certainly hopeful and we're pretty confident that we'll be able to get both insurance and the and surety. Uh, then February 23rd, we'll mail the preliminary official statement. That's one of the documents you're approving tonight. That is the selling document that is used that tells the story of Koalinga, the story of the water and the wastewater uh, enterprise funds and all of the risk factors that may be involved in issuing a bond of this type and all the positives and a history of the system and the, and the current information on the system and all the proper disclosures that protect the city in, uh, in issuing these bonds and they're being sold to, to investors. Then after they've had a period of looking at that and Oppenheimer has done their, their sales uh, uh, in anticipation of pricing and closing the issue, we have a pre-pricing uh, call on March 2nd where Oppenheimer will show what the, what the bonds are, uh, how the bonds are being sold, what the interest rate is, what the debt service is going to be. And with uh, our input in analyzing that and approving that along with your staff that will be uh, charged with making the final decision on the actual uh, the sale of the bonds, 
then there'll be a, a, a the pricing will be the next day, March the 3rd, uh, the a bond purchase agreement will be signed. And at that point, the rate is locked in and the obligation of Oppenheimer to buy the bonds and to resell the bonds is locked in place. And, uh, and then we would go two weeks later to a pre-close where we review all of the documents to make sure everything is properly in place. And then we close the financing and funds transfer March 16th. The bond, the money's going to pay off the bonds will be transferred to the trustee to pay off and open the escrow and pay off the uh, 2012. And the bonds that are to be, the proceeds that are to be used for the new project will then go to the trustee in a project fund uh, that will be drawn upon by the city as they do the project. And that completes the presentation and we're open for questions. Any questions from council? Can you hear me? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. So I'm certainly here. Yes. Bud, are you still there? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? I'm here. Okay. We've got a question for you. Sure. I don't know if you can hear me. I can't tell if my microphone's on or not. Can you hear me? Uh, no, I cannot hear you. How about now? Oh, yes. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Can you hear him now, bud? Yes, I can. I don't know why this isn't isn't working. I yeah, I'm not on mute. I can hear you. It seems like these these microphones aren't working. These two right here. There's no lights on them at all. I can hear you though. Can you hear me? Is it on now? Bud, this is Shannon. I can hear you fine. Bud, okay, you great, great. Can you hear Adam? No, I cannot. I hear you. You can hear me. Uh, okay, hold on just a second. Sure. We've got a question from one of our council members. Can you hear me now? Fine. Yes, I can. Can you hear him now? Yes. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. I'm Shannon, can you hear me? Can you pass? Is that okay? Hold on. Hold but on. I can I'll come over to my my mic. Yes, but I can I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Bud. Yes, I can. Can you hear us now? Yes. I feel like I should be getting paid by Verizon or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. I, I think there's an issue with it going to the council chambers. We can hear Adam from all the mics. So it's, I think it's an issue of just not being able to hear into council chambers. Can you hear us right now? Yes. Tell him yes. We can hear. Ron, can you hear us? Hey there. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to have an, a question to you. I want to talk about the Series A, the federal tax. Can you explain that a little bit more? Oh, the, the taxable? Are you talking about the Series A taxable? Yes. Yeah. The reason we do taxable is that under bond law for years, you could do an advance refunding of a tax exempt issue by issuing new tax exempt bonds. In the tax bill that was passed in 2017, one of the provisions was that there could no longer be uh, tax exempt bonds used on an advanced refund refunding. The thought was that since when you do an advanced refunding, you're escrowing the funds and you're putting it into an escrow at the bank to pay the old issue. So the city doesn't have to pay that issue anymore. And then they're paying the new issue with tax exempt bonds. But the investors, they felt it was a, in effect providing double the tax exemption because they continue to get tax exempt bonds on the old bonds that remain tax exempt and now tax exempt interest on the new bonds. So they decided to eliminate that. However, they did allow a refunding, advanced refunding to be done using taxable bonds because that does not 
uh, result in, in a double tax exempt situation. So when taxable rates are much, much higher than tax exempt rates, it doesn't make sense because you can't produce enough savings. However, now we've entered into a period over the last year and a half where there's been an enormous number of advanced refundings on a taxable basis because the taxable rates are so low. And most cities are worried that the tax, that the interest rates in general were, are going to go up. And certainly now we're, we're looking at a situation with what's going on that uh, it looks pretty much like you're going to see significant, possibly significant higher rates in 2020, uh, uh, 22, and 23. Uh, therefore, it makes a lot of sense since there's very little difference between the taxable and the tax exempt rates now to go ahead and do the taxable refunding. That's what's producing these terrific savings because we could wait and then do it on a tax exempt basis and find that the tax exempt rates at the time we want to do a refunding in a year or a year and a half are going to be much higher and therefore there's no savings. So that's why uh, recently, uh, uh, for example, I believe uh, the San Francisco water agency, Hetch Hetchy, uh, just did a three, almost $600 million uh, dollar issue refunding out of literally all of their uh, existing uh, uh, tax exempt bonds into, uh, into a taxable refunding. So are we actually, so are we paying taxes on these bonds? No, you don't pay taxes on the bonds. That's the investor problem. that buys these is now buying a taxable bond. So he pays, he pays uh, 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 taxes on that. Who does? The investor, the buyer of the bonds. Just like when you're issuing tax exempt bonds, the buyer buys these and doesn't pay taxes. The buyer, the buyer, the buyer pays the taxes, right? Whoever buys yes, the bonds? Yes, correct. Whoever buys the bonds pays the taxes. The only difference for the city is that they're paying, they're issuing the bonds taxable so that potential buyers have to pay taxes. And when there's very high taxable rates, it's very hard to sell the bonds. Now that's not the case because the taxable rates are so low, right. historically low. And if we don't have a bond rating right now, how do we know what our interest rates are going to be? Well, we know, well, number one, we had a bond rating. And we've talked to S and P, and we feel very confident that we're going to get a bond rating. Hold on, you're going to need all the parameters. The reason every time you start talking, it cuts you off. Um, let me try this. Is is that any better? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, the thing is that we we uh, we are all of these these um, uh, numbers assume that we're going to get a rating from S and P. We have every reason to believe after early conversations with S&P that we are going to get a rating. It's just a question of how high that rating is going to be. So uh, uh, we, we we're expecting to get at least a triple B plus. We may get a higher rating. These numbers that we've used tonight are assuming that we get at least a triple B plus and that we have bond insurance and a surety. The bond insurance will allow us to sell the bonds at a double A level. That's what the insurance does. And that gets you even lower rates that way. Okay. And the double A low is, a, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? Double that a. is, that's, that's why we would do it. We Hi. would run the analysis if, 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 for example, if the city could get a double A rating on its own, then you wouldn't use insurance. But anything, as long as it's an investment grade rating and anything over triple B minus is, uh, and we believe, as, again, we think you're gonna have at least a triple B plus the numbers really do warrant a rating. And uh, the only issue we're gonna deal with with the, with the rating agency is their confidence that the city will continue to be operating efficiently like they are now. And I think that we can make a presentation. Jasmine's done a tremendous job and Sean, and I think that uh, we're prepared to make that presentation to uh, S&P and we feel very confident uh, that we'll get a good rating. And we're, we're asking for a total of $18 million in bonds? Yes, $12 million to refund. That's going to save you $3.5 million and $7 million uh, to provide for the new project. <laughs> Adam, uh, just to kind of reiterate and put things into perspective for the council and the public. So the refunding is like a refinance. So what we're doing is we imagine if you have a mortgage on a high interest and all we're doing is re 
we are refinancing in the term for bonds uh, instead of a refinance, it's called a refunding. We're refinancing for a lower interest rate with a $3 million savings to the city. Three million seven, almost, almost three million oh, yeah. eight, right. Yeah. It seems yes. like every time we touch our bikes and everything, everything goes off and it's uh, cutting back and forth. Um, is there any other questions that uh, you guys would like to ask? Before I open up the um, uh, the public hearing, okay, um, I'd like to ask one question. This will all be brought back uh, to us at later times, and we'll, uh, this doesn't. This still is a, a long procedure, right? No, no, no. We're ready now. We that's that's now? that's why we did the the initial was Wait, in October. Resolutions approving the proceedings. This is um, proceeding. So yep. the timeline for the items uh, was the last slide that he reviewed, mm -hmm. um, and so they do need you to approve it tonight. Yeah, if to we approve forward. it tonight, though, I mean, it still goes a ways, and if something comes up and then we're not a, a, a double A or a B or something like that and we don't go with that. Oh, well, let, let, yeah, I could address that. I could address that. Yeah, our timeline that we did show. I think that Bud needs to answer that question about yep. how to terminate the process if we have a um, lower rating than what was predicted, but I don't know if he's able to. Yeah, can you hear answer. me okay? He can answer the question and Larry can relay his answer. Yeah, can you can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes. Oh, good, good. Okay. Well, yeah, I, we showed you what the timeline is, and we're going to have the call with S and P uh, this coming Monday. Then after this Monday, S and P takes it and reviews it. They have a meeting of their credit committee. They come back to us. We're estimating that on February nineteenth, and they're going to give us the rating. And at that point, we're going to know what rating we have. Can we get insurance? And then we'll proceed to the next step. If something untoward happens and they give us no rating and the numbers still don't work to produce reasonable savings and reasonable debt service, then we would, we would not go forward. But we're assuming that that is not going to be the case. We'd be shocked if, it, if, that, if that wasn't. The, we're, we're, we will be able to move forward with this after we get the rating. And then we then the bond are put on the market for sale. That's when Oppenheimer, they're here today and they can address that if you would like. Uh, they will start their marketing and they will pre-market the bonds and get orders for the bonds um, and then come back to, uh, to us with their offer to purchase the bonds at a particular rate, at a particular price. And the numbers that we showed you tonight are our best estimate of what those numbers would be. There'll be something very similar to that, we're assuming. If they're not, then you, they, they, there's no commitment yet until the city staff uh, moves forward and, and approves the offer that, the, that Oppenheimer has made. And that's part of our job that we've all done for the city for the last 14 years is to take a look at that, make sure it's reasonable, make sure it produces the savings that are worthwhile for the city to do. And by the way, your resolution tonight, uh, as your debt management policy does, has a maximum limit of bonds being issued of 21 million and a minimum savings of net present value savings of 3%. Right now, we're estimating the savings, as you, as you saw in my presentation, are going to be 9%. So um, that's when the bonds will be, by March the 3rd, we're estimating the bonds will be priced and there'll be an agreement to sell the bonds and the deal will close March 16th. We're, we think it's important to move forward on this because the interest rates are starting to go up and we want to be sure we capture the maximum savings by moving as quickly as we can. Okay. So I think the answer is it's not coming back to council. Is that right? Correct. We'll come back to the council after it's sold with the presentation yeah. to show you the results. Right. If the rate, if we don't agree with the rating, uh, do you guys have any other questions? I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing. Okay, the public hearing is now open. Um, Anybody like to say anything from the audience? Mayor Ramsey, can you hear me? Mayor Ramsey? Yes. 
Uh, we do have one comment yes, from ahead. Nathan Vosberg. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Vosberg, can you guys hear me? Oh. Yes. Nathan, Nathan, can you hear me? Hear me? Go ahead. Okay. So my questions would be, is that, is this merely, I know this is a lot of data to take in. Is this merely refinancing current debt or is this incurring new debt? And is the savings because of extending the lifetime of these new bonds that will be given rather than the ones that we currently have. And then also tied to that is, what does that look like to the rate payer um, years down the road well, whenever these bond payments are due? And I, so I guess that's a question, not a comment. Sure. sure. I can, I can answer, answer that. that. Okay, okay, number, number one, one, number one, n number one, we're, we're issuing, uh, there's two series that we went through. The one series for the savings has nothing to do with the new project. The, the savings will, will be um, um, uh, generated from issuing bonds that have the same maturity as the existing bonds. The only difference is the interest rate, instead of being, you're paying now 5%, is going to be in the 3% range. And therefore the existing debt service, that if you didn't do this deal and you just continue to pay the existing debt service, your, 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 your debt service payments um, would be $3,600,000 higher than the debt service on the comparable refunding bonds that we're going to issue that equal the exact same term only with the lower interest rate. So it does not extend the term and it pays off an existing obligation that you would have to pay. And therefore, by definition, it's going to be more beneficial to the rate payers because you're going to have, uh, uh, you're gonna need rates to uh, accommodate a lower debt service on that portion of the debt. Now, the second issue is for needed new improvements and is separate from the refunding, but it is a, the, the series B, does produce $7 million in, in uh, new project funds that are gonna be used for needed improvements according to the, uh, uh, to the city. These are needed improvements for the water system. And I think uh, Sean uh, and uh, Dan Bergman could certainly go over those if you have a question on what that's going to be used for. And again, that's not going to extend the debt. It's going to increase the debt um, by the amount of the new debt However, as I showed earlier in that chart about that, that's why I pointed out the debt service coverage. The debt service coverage is going to be in excess of one and a half times. So therefore, there should be no need for any rate increases uh, going forward based on the sale of these bonds. These bonds are, are, can be well-funded with the existing rates that are in place. Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor Ramsey, um, I do have another question from Mr. Vosberg. Okay. Nathan, Nathan go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, so I would just want the council to uh, ask the city and understand what that's going to do to rates, understanding that this is gonna be a new project that you're um, going forward with. The three to 5% deal makes sense in my opinion, I mean, and uh, just wondering, you know, what's that going to do for our rates as a citizen? You know, um, I, I think our okay, rates uh, are going up. I might, I might be answering answer that. that. Like, 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 like uh, uh, in here, here too. Uh, uh, we've, we've already, already raised, raised the rates. rates. And, and we did the other raise the rates, rates to do, 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 do this, this bond, bond, to get ready, get ready for the bond. bond. Uh, that's why we raised the to get ready for the bond. So we've been, been, been so ready. Ready. John, okay. Ready. So there won't be any increases after this then uh, that are looked at, or will there be other than what they've already discussed, which was like the phase service? There, there won't I, be I, any I, additional rate increases. Okay. You guys need to reverb. Right, right. So it, so sounds, it sounds like there's like an, an echo. echo. Well, I appreciate it. I think you answered my question. Thank you so much. Sean, are you there? 
Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the rates that were set just recently in the past few months, um, if time's gone by that quickly, I think, um, those rates took into account the new debt that the city was going to undertake as they had identified those projects in the rate study uh, that the city is going to undertake with the bond issuance. So the rates that were set um, were inclusive of the new, the new anticipated debt that the city would take out for those specific water and wastewater projects. John, you were cut, cutting out really bad. Could you go over that one more time? Sorry, is that better now? Is that better now, Mayor? Go ahead and try it, but don't touch anything. Just talk. <laughs> Can you hear me? I think we're having some audio issues to the council chambers. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. So the... The new rates that were put in place in November, those rates anticipated the new additional debt that was presented tonight. So those rates that were set will not be increased due to the additional debt that the council's considering tonight. Yeah, basically we raised the rates uh, while a couple of months ago. I, do you remember that, uh, Adam? We did raise the rates. They were, uh, we were gonna, head into negative territory if we didn't do right. it. Right, you know. and, and we, we raised them a little bit higher because we knew we were gonna have to have these bond issues uh, to, re to redo our water uh, and our waste plant. So, and that's, that's, we've done this in the past and stuff. And we've had, in the past, we've had some bad rates, but uh, we weren't really good on the city. And, but with, since uh, Jasmine's here, our, our rates have gone up because she's caught us up on a lot of our, our debt and everything and uh, she's doing our, our banking a lot better than it was. It was really hard to kind of figure out where we were in uh, past days and stuff. But now we got a reserve and everything and I, I um, think this is a, a good thing uh, that we're doing here and it does help us pay and we are saving money on, on the debt. And, uh, but that's about it, it for me. Um, is, if there's any, is, are there any other questions? Mayor, this is Dan Bergman. Go ahead and close the uh, public hearing. Mayor Ramsey? Mayor Ramsey? Yes. I believe Dan Bergman wanted to speak. Okay, go ahead, Dan. Uh, Mayor, this is Dan Bergman. Can you hear me? Uh, not very good. It's Larry, it's coming in with you are, but it's not out here. Oh, that's okay. Well, I'll just make a brief statement. Just to reiterate, when I did the rate study last year, we anticipated the projects. The projects are critically important, especially rebuilding the Derrick water tank. That tank is in dire need of attention. So when the $7 million becomes available, the city will immediately as a first priority begin the process of rebuilding that tank. So again, just to reiterate, the new rates do include, they did anticipate the bond funding that would be coming. And of course we are glad that the assumptions we made last year on how much the bonds would cost have, have held, that's important. It's kind of a chicken and egg situation. So the point is it was all anticipated and it's critically important to the city. Thank you. Thank you, we, we got that real good. Go Kate Council, what would you like to do? Um, well, in general, I'm not for bonds and I'm not for this either. Uh, look, we're only, we're asking for $18.3 million in bonds and we're paying $12.6 million in interest. $12.6 million isn't even going to any infrastructure for the city, it's going to some fat cat banker who's gonna get all kinds of money off of our, our people. And it's almost dollar for dollar near it. Um, as a council, as a whole, we have failed. We have failed here. No, we have not done our due diligence. I, I, I disagree. We, uh, the way they're doing this, we're gonna save a lot of money in the long run on, on our bond issues. And this is the way other cities uh, build. We don't have the money to do the infrastructure. So you go out and get bonds 
you, and uh, this all is uh, paid for by our rates. That's why we raised the rates uh, this last time to, to do this. We need another tank uh, out there at Derrick. Everybody knows that. There's other things that have to be at the water system and get fixed. And this is the way everybody does it. This, this is the way it's done. It, it's hard to understand. And I know we had a, a problem tonight on listening and trying to figure out what we were doing. But it seems to me that the rates are at, at, a, at a good level right now. And um, we better ju jump on this and do it now, or we're going to be up and we're going to have to have higher rates to just to do anything. So I'm not against the whole um, that we don't need any bonds. Yes, there is some bonds that we do need. But then I'm going back around to where I think that we have failed. In a, and when I say we fail, I, I'm including myself in this. Uh, we have not gone to Sacramento to try and get state funding for this. We have not pushed the feds to give us federal funding for this. We have not gone over every single avenue we could. We have failed. And I include myself in that. I know we can go to Sacramento and get money for some of this. I'm not saying we don't need some bonds. Yes, we do. We need that tank fixed. But we don't need to be paying eight, $12.6 million in interest. That's my deal. I know we can get money from Sacramento to pay for some of these things. And when we pay for some of these things, we're taking out a ton of interest too that we're paying. And these are gonna go straight to the city with to our infrastructure, where now we're paying $18 million in bonds and sending 12 million to some already guy who's already a millionaire. So I think that we can do more on this. I think that you know some bonds may be our most, things that we have the most dire need of fixing can, can get bonds. But the rest of it, I, I just, until we explore all our avenues and, and we're, we're, we're doing this, we're approving it and we don't even know our bond rating. We're gonna leave it on, on Marissa to decide whether or not that's good enough. Not that Marissa can't decide, but it's not, it's not fair to her if our, bond, if our bond rate doesn't come in where it should and she's gotta make a decision, well, do I go with this or do I not go with this? Mayor, may I? Go ahead. So the item before you has been um, clearly vetted by me as your finance director, your uh, municipal advisor, the finance team uh, from Oppenheimer, which includes Nikki uh, 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 Tallman. She's an expert in this and um, it's been vetted by your bond counsel, Bryant Quint. Um, we have put our heads together as the experts in this field and um, what's before you has been a product of many, many um, months, weeks, hours of work to put this together. Um, just the official statements that are going to get posted when the city is ready to sell bonds after it's approved by you tonight just that particular document, um, I believe it's over a hundred pages. There's charts, graphs, projections, estimates, all kinds of financial information that has been calculated and put together into this document. And um, it's also attached. And so um, I, I feel confident in this item. And that's why my recommendation is to adopt these resolutions and move forward. Um, I'm not discounting what Adam is saying. Yes, we do have other resources available to us, but unfortunately it's too late in the game to do that. And the reason I say this is because the bond market, the interest rate market is an extreme low at this current moment. And if we don't take advantage of these savings, $3.8 million in just interest savings to the city and to the water and wastewater fund, I can't sit back and not let the city, obviously the decision lies in the council um, together uh, collectively, but me being as your finance director, I can't let you sit back and not um, even consider approving this. Um, $3.8 million to this small city is major money. 9.7% interest savings. Those are drastic reductions in cost. So when we look at this $18 million bond issue, yes, it is a lot of money, but of the 18, 
12 million is just refinancing your current debt. And so the only net new money is the difference between 18 and 12, which is $6 million. And that $6 million, yes, we could have gotten grants. Yes, we could have gone to um, Washington, D.C. or Sacramento to get these funds. There's no, not a doubt in my mind. But unfortunately, the critical condition of those infrastructures for the water supply to our residents and the, the threat to the health and safety of the residents this is a critical item and it's not something that should be taken lightly or um, you know, something that we can wait on. I think um, Sean and I can both agree that the city has waited long enough to put this critical infrastructure improvements um, on the back burner. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. You know what? Uh... <clears throat> Adam, you're 100% right, but so are you, Jasmine. And we're at that fine point where we can't look back and say what we should have done because it is too late. Time is, is running out. Um, so because of the city council's error in judgment and not doing their job, we're, we're stuck with this one. And as Jasmine said, um, if she's going to put herself out there on this, I think we have to go with that. And just hopefully we can learn for the future from our past mistakes and not sitting and, and waiting for it to come to us. We have to be more aggressive and go get it because if we don't, then we're gonna be stuck in the now because we need this now. Um, and if we don't do it, who knows where we'll be if we wait. Um, so, I mean, yeah, we, we're going to have to accept the losses that we didn't go out and get that six mil. Um, but in the end result, if she's our finance person and she's strong for this, um, I, I think this is what we have to go with. This is what's on our plate now. And um, our choices is not even limited because we need it now. Um, so I, I, I think we have to go, we have to move. We have to move on it though. Anybody else? I mean, I, just like Councilman Singleton said, you know, both there's both there both both uh, individuals have good, great points, and it, it's you know it, it's unfortunate it's in the, the time limit. It's not good, you know. Um, one thing, if you know, if we do agree on this, I just want to make sure that in future we do go out. You know, just like, you know, Councilman Atkinson said, we do go out for those federal and state and help that, that, that doesn't put us or doesn't put a future council table, you know, on deciding in the last minute. And, and you know, um, it, you know, both of them are doing a great job. It's just, you know, I just hope that in the future we don't stay here again, getting, you know, you know <laughs> making somebody rich instead of, you know, the city. Okay, thank you. Do you have anything? Uh, okay. I got a question. When, yes. If we pass these bonds, when are the construction and everything going to start? Sean, do you uh, have that? Yeah, Council, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Council? Or, or Dan? No. Mayor, can you hear me? Well, Mayor, here I am. Can you hear me? They yeah. can hear us, Dan. Dan, Mayor, can you hear me? That's strange, Sean. I think he can, he can hear me, but not you. Mayor, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So Sean's in Coalinga, and you can't hear him. And I'm in Walnut Creek, and you can hear me. Something <laughs> is just bizarre about this. Right. Well, can you answer the question? Yeah, yeah, sorry. So um, the city has received already requests for proposals for qualified engineers and project management, um, specifically focused around Derek Tank, but others as well. So as quickly as the city can contract with the company that's awarded to, the planning stages will begin with Derek Tank. Derek Tank, as I said previously, is critical. As we have talked about timing for that, what's likely to happen is that the Derrick Tank bypass will be repaired this winter, 
along with a new very large valve in the road. And then next winter, um, just as soon as the hottest weather is over in 2022, they would begin construction on, or I should say almost destruction. They have to take the top of the tank off, but it'll be the winter of 22-23 that the work is happening on that giant tank. And other smaller projects will be ongoing as well, but it will start soon, I suppose, is the best answer to your question, as soon as possible. It'll probably right after March when, when the bonds are done. Probably start That's, correct. That's correct. That's <clears> correct. <throat> okay. That's kind of my point. <clears throat> I'm sorry, what? The construction's not even going to be until 2022 or 2023, but this needs to be passed right now. No, I, Mayor, I, Mayor, may I? Um, I can kind of shed some light on why we need to do this now. No, that's for the that's for the second tank. Right. They they still have to top, uh, do the top of the tank too. Mayor, can you hear me? Go on. So the reason for uh, for getting this passed tonight Did and the urgency um, as twenty twenty three. Um. So again, uh, the reason for the urgency and the reason it needs to be passed tonight is our next bond debt payment for the 2012 um, water and wastewater uh, bonds, which is the $12 million that are being refinanced in this particular bond issue. Um, we have a bond debt payment coming up and what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, not have to make that bond debt payment uh, if these bonds are refinanced prior to the March uh, 2021 uh, uh, debt service payment date, because we make our debt service payments twice in a year, once in March and once in September, and we're structuring it in such a way that we don't have to make that uh, March payment, and Bud can co correct me if I'm wrong, and so um, one, the, the first component is that interest rates are at an all-time low. We don't know when they're going to go up. So um, we don't know what the uh, interest rates are going to be, you know, in six months, a year, a year and a half, two years. And so we're, we're maximizing on that um, because the feds have lowered the rate. And um, the second component, the reason it's before you tonight is that we're trying to get this um, bond issue closed uh, prior to the March uh, uh, debt service payment for those $12 million water and wastewater bonds. Correct. Mayor, can you hear me? Hey, Council, what would you like to do? Had to go forth. I mean, would, would you it, like to make a motion? Make a motion. You make a motion to adopt it. To adopt. I, I don't want to read it. It's too much, but um, too, too much to read. But we haven't. There is. There is a. Oh, I'll go ahead and read it. That way we'll, we'll make it. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have a second? We have a motion. Do we have a second? We do have a second. I'll second. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Singleton. Councilman Singleton made the motion and Mayor Pro Tem Horn uh, seconded it. Roll call. Councilman please. Singleton. Councilman Singleton. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Horn. Mayor Pro Tem Horn. Aye. Councilman Ramirez. Councilman Ramirez. Aye. Councilman Atkinson. Councilman Atkinson. I'm going to vote no. I think that we can um, do the refinance and maybe get a million out of it and pursue other avenues. So I'm going to vote no. However, I'm with you all in spirit, except for Ray. <laughs> Mayor Ramsey, Mayor Ramsey. 
Mayor Ramsey? I vote aye. Okay, motion carried. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the consent calendar. Wait, uh, <laughs> approved minutes of the January 21st, 2021. Number two, adopt resolutions 4005, approving the city of Kalinga debt management and continuing uh, disclosure policies consistent and compliant with section 8855I of the California government code. Number three, authorize city manager to execute an agreement for remote videoing Vidoing procedures with the Supreme Court, I um, mean Superior Court of California, Fresno County. Are you still on? Is, is that enough to do the one motion? Number four, direct staff to look into adding a stop sign at Pine and Glen and repair okay. flashing they street lights in the area. Me, yeah. And number five, fire, fire department quarterly okay. report. Is there anything like anybody would like to pull? Anybody would like to make a motion to accept these? I'll make a motion. Okay, anybody second? I'll second. Okay, the motion was made by uh, Councilman Ramirez, seconded by Singleton. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Ramirez? Councilman Ramirez? Aye. Councilman Singleton? Councilman Singleton? Councilman Singleton? Aye. Councilman Atkinson? Councilman Atkinson? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Horn? Mayor Pro Tem Horn? Aye. Mayor Ramsey? Mayor Ramsey? I also vote aye. <clears throat> okay, we'll go to item number six, ordinance presentation, discussion, and potential action items. Number one, authorize the assistant city manager to execute design and construction engineering uh, task order with the city engineer for rehabilitation of 7th Street between Forest and Elm Street. Sean? I'm actually gonna try to review the staff report for him and then he can just have questions since you guys have, um, we have trouble hearing in here. Uh, so the recommendation is to authorize the assistant city manager to execute a task order with the city engineer for preliminary design and construction engineering for the rehab of 7th Street between Forest and Elm Avenue. Uh, this item was requested as a future agenda item by Councilman Atkinson for staff to look into the costs and scope of the work for rehabilitating 7th Street between Forest and Elm Avenue. The council directed staff to use the remaining 2009 RDA bond proceeds to cover the cost of this project pending approval by the Fresno County Oversight Board. On Thursday, January 21st, 2021, the Fresno County Oversight Board approved the use of these funds. Staff is working with the city engineer and developed a scope of work and cost estimate to rehab 7th Street. A copy of the scope of work has been attached to the staff report. The project description includes demolition of existing improvements, saw cutting, roadway excavation and grading, installation of curb and gutter, sidewalk, alley approach, driveway approach, AC pavement, aggregate base, sidewalk drain pipe, storm, storm drain inlet, existing utility lid adjustment, thermoplastic stripping, thermoplastic pavement markings, and construction surveying. The cost is approximately $325,465, and staff is requesting authorization to execute a preliminary engineering task order for $45,600, and a construction engineering task order of $26,600 to allow the city engineer to begin design on the project. And then if you have any questions, uh, hopefully we can hear Sean any questions? No questions? No, but I'd like to add that we also take down the trees right outside of Chevron. Uh, they have asked me that we add that onto it. Um, the older trees, the, you know what I'm talking about? It's on Elm, like four or five trees right yeah, there. Where they put the standard mailbox. Yes, exactly. 
uh, I ask that we add that on there. And then we also, when they do the sidewalk, that they have uh, the tree boxes. Yeah, I think the tree boxes are in, in this. I, I, they showed in some pictures that we're going to put tree boxes. Yeah. That's full. Councilman open. Atkinson, can you hear me? Okay. Is there a motion? So I'll make that as my motion. Okay. The, uh, can you guys hear me? The motion has been made by Adam at Councilman Atkinson and seconded by Mayor Pro Tim Horn. Roll call, please. Councilman Atkinson. Councilman Atkinson. Aye. Mayor Pro Tim Horn. Mayor Pro Tim Horn. Aye. Councilman Ramirez. Councilman Ramirez. Aye. Councilman Singleton. Councilman Singleton. It's Adam. <laughs> we're we're going to go with I. <laughs> Mayor Ramsey. Mayor Ramsey. Mayor Ramsey. I also vote aye. Okay, motion carried. Okay, we'll go to uh, item number 6.2, discussion regarding city-owned parks. Marissa? Thank you. So I'm going to need Larry's assistance for a minute to get the presentation up on the screen. Okay, so this item is on here. It was requested as a future agenda item by uh, Councilman Ramirez to uh, discuss the city parks. And so this presentation is very short, but it just provides like a brief overview of the city parks. And so the city maintains a total of five parks. They vary from pocket parks to neighborhood parks to community parks. Uh, Centennial Park is an example of a neighborhood park. Sandalwood is a neighborhood park. Frame Park is a community park. Lynch is a pocket plot park and Veterans Park is also a pocket plot park. <laughs> um, and then CHRPD maintains three parks varying from community parks to the sports complex, which is a regional park. Uh, the status of the parks due to COVID-19. All parks within Kalinga, both those owned by the city and those owned by CHRPD are open. However, the California Department of Public Health has limited youth and recreational sports. These types of activities occur at CHRPD parks, not at city parks. And examples include, but are not limited to the following. Um, tennis, walking, hiking are currently permitted in the tier that we're in, which is the purple tier. Uh, that's often referred to as the widespread tier also. Um, baseball and softball are permitted once the county gets into the red tier. And then basketball, football, soccer, and volleyball are permitted outdoors only when the county gets into the orange tier. Uh, this sort of outlines the difference between a regional park and a neighborhood park. So a neighborhood park is smaller. It's typically two to five acres. It serves the citizens living within walking distance of the park. It allows for informal activity, passive recreation, and community cohesion. There's no exclusivity to ensure accessibility to the immediate neighborhood. It includes playground equipment, play fields, and picnic facilities. Larger neighborhood parks may include uh, non-light tennis courts, volleyball courts, and basketball courts. And examples of these types of parks, again, are Centennial Park and Sandalwood Park. A regional park is typically larger. It's um, on average five to 20 acres. It serves a larger geographic area, usually within a one to two mile radius or more. Um, it's uh, used to engage families and visitors for an entire day with multiple, multiple and diverse activities and amenities throughout. It includes all of the improvements found in a neighborhood park plus ball diamonds and play fields designed for competitive athletics, tennis and basketball courts. It has off street parking and shelter and restroom facilities. It also may include lighted play fields, 
spectator areas and concession areas. Examples of a regional park would be Keck Park and Olson Park and also the sports complex. Um, at city parks, there is no exclusivity. The hours are limited. City parks within subdivisions have been designated as neighborhood parks with the expectation that it would service the single family homes within the direct vicinity. The general plan goal is to provide 2.5 acres of park space per 1,000 residents. Uh, CHRPD parks alone meet the city's goal. The park space is to be provided either by dedication in lieu of impact fee payment or through the payment of impact fees if the development is too small to warrant a neighborhood park. So here are some considerations for ant intensifying activity in neighborhood parks. Uh, one consideration is traffic. Um, a neighborhood park is designated to serve the surrounding and immediate single and multifamily dwellings. So we anticipate walking and or bicycling to the facility in lieu of autom automobile transportation. Um, increased vehicle trips and parking demand would affect the surrounding properties. Another uh, consideration is parking. These facilities are not designed with parking facilities to accommodate the increased traffic and vehicle demand from players and spectators. Um, parking would then leak into the surrounding neighborhoods. Another consideration is noise. A noise level may be intensified beyond that of passive recreation. Noise related activities tend to increase beyond that reasonably acceptable to the surrounding neighborhood. This could range from whistles, generators, crowd noise, and amplified music. Um, another consideration is sanitation. Neighborhood parks have limited trash receptacle capacity and do not typically have restroom facilities, which pose a health and safety risk. Uh, there's general plan consistency. So the city plans encourage collaboration with other entities, such as the Parks and Rec District and the school district to provide joint use facilities more appropriate for competitive athletics. The sports complex has ball fields and joint use fields appropriate for soccer and football. Uh, there's the consideration of insurance. There would be added insurance costs to the city. Uh, there's operational considerations. Uh, the city doesn't own or operate any regional parks. So CHRPD is responsible for the maintenance and operation related to special events, activities, sports and recreation programs. Uh, staffing is another consideration. The city does not employ any parks or recreation staff. And then the prior environmental review. So prior CEQA review limited the potential impacts to traffic since the immediate neighborhood was expected to be the primary users of the facility. And subsequent CEQA review would be necessary to analyze any intensified impact to a city park. And that's the end. Uh, this item's here for discussion, so I don't know if you have any questions about anything or if you want to discuss anything um, or if you want to just take it as informational, but I'm open to any questions. And if I can't answer them specifically about parks, I'm sure Sean knows the answer. Anyone have any questions? I got a couple of questions. Um, I know it says the, no the noise. Um, does that pertain to a certain hour or, you know, like, what does that, you know, I know it says noise. So the, so the list there is just <clears throat> if you wanted to consider intensifying the use of the park. So right now we don't have any regional parks. We only have um, the smaller parks. And so if council wanted to change one of the city's neighborhood parks, um, to a regional park, you would go through this process with each one of these things, um, and it would require a um, CEQA review, which is out, I mean, the city does it, but it's a, a process that we would have to go through for consideration, and that would consider uh, sanitation, staffing, operation, insurance, the general plan, consistency, noise, parking, and traffic. Um, I'm just, because um, also I'm, I'm looking at it as future, because I know you know, in the future, we've had baseball there too. A lot of the kids have gone and gone and practiced there as well. So it's, it's not a certain sports, there's major sports, you know, that, that are being used there on that certain, um, which I'm talking about Centennial Park. Um, the other ones, of course, they're not capable because they're, you know, there's not enough space, but 
um, I don't know, my, my, I would like to see something being put in as like where some of the, some of the kids or anybody wants to use it, you know, could use that certain area. So currently with Centennial Park, um, it can be used informally. Mm -hmm. um, people can get together there and, you know, play a family game of baseball if they wanted yeah. to. The park doesn't allow for exclusivity. And so I know that's been something that people have reached out and said, you know, they want to sign a contract with the city to have exclusive use of a certain area within the park. And city parks don't allow for that. Only parks and rec parks do. Right, right. Um, so informally, if people want to get together and use the park, that's what the park's there for. Um, it's just that any change to intensify the park, to change it from its existing status of a neighborhood park to a regional park would require CEQA review and likely a public hearing for the people in the neighborhood to come speak. Um, and then there would be considerations that we would have to do. We would need to add restrooms. We would need to add on-site parking, all of these things that would be costs to the city, to the general fund. And then once it was reclassified as a regional park, then we'd essentially should be giving it to Parks and Rec right. to manage because we don't manage regional right. parks. So we would then spend this money to make it a regional park, <laughs> give it to Parks and Rec. And then in the current status, they would say, well, you can't use it anyway because we're not allowing these practices and games at our park. So it sort of defeats the intent. Um, I think the unofficial use of the park um, from what I know has been okay. We haven't got many complaints. Um, we just, the park in its current status cannot allow exclusivity. And I know that there have been some groups that want that exclusive use of the park during certain days and times. And unfortunately, the, it's, it's not allowed in a neighborhood park. And I know it's hard with the pandemic going on with a lot, a lot. You know, it, it's changed not only restaurants, it's changed gyms changed a lot of things and I mean I, I know it would be too much to put restrooms and stuff like that I mean I just I, I just hate when these when you the youth in our in our community gets shut down too much and it, it, it's I mean it's not just me it's a lot of the people in the community that see this and um you know, we change things for restaurants, for gyms, for other stuff. But when it comes to our youth, it's it just nothing. It just, I always see a no one, no one, no one, no. You know, I just, I just wish we could do something without just getting way too expensive. And, you know, I mean, it, it's different. Things, things are different now. And, and I just wish we could just <clears throat> nudge a little bit, you know. But, you know, I see all the, you know, regulations and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, that's just my opinion. Have I, you gone? Have you gone to the uh, Parks and Rec as a as a group? You know, going together and uh, asking them to start opening up a little bit more and at all. Unfortunately, the answer has been no. Um, as a uh, as the last time, I mean, the soccer fields are being used. Um, we did vote on the table. If the tier was to you know play outside, we could use them. So they did open them, um, but unfortunately, um, I, I don't know where they stand right now. And I know they put fences up, but they, there's a the gate. There's no gate on there. I don't think. No, you no. Can the, walk right right into. Yeah, it. the the fence was put up because uh, people were were starting to get in there with the trucks and uh, right. rods and right. You know, they they were those were the reasons why they were put up. But uh, we did vote on the on the table, of course, you know, um, to open them up when the tier got to where we could play outside, which is now, you know, but, you know, um, unfortunately so far, a lot of things have been no. I know that, oh, I was gonna say, I know that it's not something that people enjoy doing, um, but one way, now that we're back in the colored tiers, the way that we advance through the colors is by negative test results. And so I know people don't like getting COVID tests, but the more people who get out there and test and have a negative test result, the quicker we can move to the other colored tiers, which allow additional things to open up. 
Um, I know it's not a pleasant experience. I know that people don't wanna do it, but it is convenient. We do have it here locally the last few days. They have not had lines. Um, there's been uh, actually minimal usage, which I hope starts to increase again so that we don't lose that testing site here in Coolinga. Um, I hope more people start using it so that it stays here because it's, it's um, supposed to be here through March 31st. And then the hope is that it then converts to a vaccination site. Um, and so we need to do what we can to keep it here. But the more people who get out and test and have negative test results, not just in Coalinga, but in Fresno County as a whole, the more it helps us move through those colored tiers so things can begin to open. And that's, and that's true, yeah, that's true. With our organization that, you know, if there's anybody sick, we don't let them back until they get tested, until they see, we see paperwork and we, we've taken, you know, we're, we're the only organization right now <laughs> that, that's basically participating. And we, we highly spend money on, you know, sanitizer, masks, you know, uh, educate, educating the, the players and coaches. So, you know, it does help out and, you know, you know, I'm, I'm really fortunate that, that they've been following these guidelines and we've been going on with our season. How long is left in your season? Uh, there's about, I believe, seven, seven more games, and that's not including playoffs. Then playoffs, two, two to three games, and then championship. So about 10 games. Mm -hmm. Just to add, all the Division One <laughs> cities are looking at us like, where do these guys come from? <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm glad the community, a lot of the community has been really, really, you know, um, supportive. Okay. Anybody else? I'm a bit confused. What was the presentation about just educational purposes? Or is there, was there a goal for that? Or is there a plan? Or was it supposed to go somewhere? Uh, it's a, only listed as a discussion item, so it was informational. It's basically um, explaining what is what can be accepted there and what can't be accepted. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I think his goal was try to have that usage, um, but under those guidelines, you can't. And if we dressed it up to have those uses, then we still wouldn't be able to use it because it'd go back over the, uh, over there. So, I mean, either way, it's going to be a lose-lose because we can fix it up to get it to that level, but then we have to lose that because it has to go over there. So that, at least you can use this somewhat now as opposed to not at all. I mean, it's it's... With everything in Fresno, you have to go out to find those places to practice at, and hopefully you can get some in for, for the kids. I mean, it's not against the kids, but it's not for them either. So, I mean, so the best thing you can do for that situation is leave it as is and get your practices in when you can without going over those or outside those guidelines that are there. I mean, that, that, that's just a tough spot. So then I understand that that should be the responsibility of the park and rec, correct? And their board to make those decisions as far as those parks are concerned and i don't think parks and rec make those decisions isn't that from fresno the health department makes those decisions so parks and rec from my understanding is following um what the county guidelines allow in yes. their parks okay we'll go to item number uh 6.3 um Ordinance presentation discussion potential action item. Council consideration regarding a request by Adam Atkinson to waive the attorney client privilege uh, with, res with respect to two memorandums prepared by the city attorney. Mario? I, I got to recruit yeah. myself, I believe. So give me a minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going out.
Okay, Mario. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a request from um, Councilman Atkinson. So he's asked, um, he asked for the, for the process of um, how to go and, and release a couple of um, memorandums that I wrote to the council at the time. Now there's two memos. Um, I don't wanna discuss them publicly because they are privileged. So I'm kind of generally gonna describe um, them to you, but the whole council did receive those two memos. Um, back in October and, and November of last year. Um, he's, uh, Councilman Atkinson has asked that the council, uh, the, re the remaining council, consider waiving the attorney-client privilege and releasing those documents. Now, there, there are two memorandum. I can tell you generally, um, one was regarding um, items and the frequency to be brought back to council. So when, I when the council decides an item, um, one way or another, how can a, a, that same item be brought back, you know, like under the circumstances? Um, and then the other one, the other topic was um, regarding uh, Councilman Atkinson's uh, involvement in a uh, cannabis-related business. Uh, so those were the topics of, of the two um, memorandum. Now I do have copies of them for the new councilman if you want to see them. Um, but uh, but generally, uh, what he's asking for is those to be the privilege to be waived. Only the council can do that. I can't do that. Um, and so if the council wants to do that, what it would mean is those two memorandum would become public documents for uh, anybody to see. Um, if you're not familiar with it, I mean, I just want to give you a kind of an understanding that, you know, the, the privilege itself is meant to um, provide a, a level of security, not just, you know, in, in general between a client and the lawyer so that you could have open discussion back and forth um, without Everybody, everybody kind of knowing that. In this case, it's between the city and, and myself uh, and my office. Um, and that's, uh, that's essentially the, the, um, the purpose of the privilege is just to encourage open communication, um, to know that you know, things that the council tells me and the things that I tell the council, uh, they stay protected um, and, and confidential. Um, so like I said, I do have, uh, it, it's, it is up to the council um, to waive the privilege or not. Uh, and I do have copies of the letter in case the two new council people would like to review them. Um, for, for me, uh, waiving something like that, that's, that, that's that, no, because that's a one, two, that, that's, it's, it's what it's called. It, it protects all of us. Basically. Right. I mean, so to, to let that be opened up, I mean, that, that's, I can't foresee any reason for that. Uh, even though everybody has their reasonings for opening that up, but I, Attorney, no, that privilege is something that should be only between the one, two. I can't open that up for somebody else. It's pretty much the same as HIPAA. It, it, it's, you break that confidentiality, it's, it's actually illegal, isn't it? On, on, the, on the HIPAA even, side. Even with it, the consent? Yeah, in this, <laughs> on the HIPAA side, yes, without the consent it would be. In this case, it, there's, there's no legality to it, but it's, right. it's similar. Yeah, so, I mean, that's me. I, I, I can't open that up. You know, it's, it's kind of like a, it's, it's trust, you know, and then um, if, if you break the trust, I mean, it might not affect us, but it might affect us later, right. you know, down the road. And we, we all trust each other right now. I mean, I, I hope we all do. Yeah. And, uh, and we want to take care of each other and everything stays here in, in closed session. I mean, we're not in closed session right now, so we're in open session, but everything should stay in closed session. That stays that, and opening it up would be a, a Pandora's box, I think, too. Yeah, I mean, because that's attorney client. That that's that's a one two thing. It isn't a four five six seven thing. I mean, so yeah. I. Do we I need can, a vote on this, or can we have a consensus? Or uh, yeah, can we get a motion? Because it sounds like um, the the motion would be to deny the request. Okay. I'll make the motion to deny the request. I'll second that. Okay, uh, well, the motion was made by uh, uh, Councilman Singleton and seconded by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Horn. Roll call, please. Councilman Singleton. Councilman Singleton. Uh, my eye or no? You're an eye. Aye. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Horn. Mayor Pro Tim Horn. Aye. 
Councilman Ramirez? Councilman Ramirez? Uh, aye. Mayor Ramsey? Mayor Ramsey? Mayor Ramsey? Aye. Motion uh, passed. Okay. And Shannon, you heard that Councilman Atkinson was stepped out of the room at the beginning of that discussion, right? I did. Thank you. She's Mario, on. did you hear me? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, do we have any announcements or anything on that? Or any city manager's announcements? Is that the no, item you're on? Announcements for, for that for him? Oh, uh, the the uh, council. There was a motion by Councilman Singleton and seconded by Horn that passed unanimously to not grant the waiver. Okay, thank you. I just I just wanted to get that out there because I didn't know how we could give back give it back to him. Okay, uh, next we go to announcements. City mount uh, city manager's announcements. I have none. Thank you. Any councilman's announcements? Okay, and mayor announcements, I have none right now. Future agenda items, do we have any future agenda items? Yeah, um, to change, figure out a way to make the planning commission meetings um, at, a, at a different time because lately we've uh, been passing things and then it doesn't get to the next planning commission meeting, it gets carried over the next one. So we get farther and farther behind. So there's ways that we can make it more st streamlined and we talked about it earlier. Okay. Anything else for anybody? Yeah, I, I want to see who could uh, find some information on um, uh, with the thrift stores being out of control. Where they Please unmute your mic. Where, uh, sorry, I thought I did. Um, sorry. Uh, with the thrift store, um, the the it's it's getting out of control. Where the dumping, it's really really bad, and um, they they have caught them on on video. Um, we they the. The building, the, the staff have has a, they put a gate up, they put fencing. Now we're there. They're actually using it as a dump site now. So um, a lot of the times they're actually cleaning um, not only the side where the uh, the flower shop is at, uh, because they they think that now that they we have they they have we have a camera there they could dump it over there. But we want to see if I mean I know there's an ordinance or there's a penal code on there. But uh, it, it just it's getting out of control. You know, they're dumping refrigerators like really bad. And it, it just, you know, and, and a lot of them, um, it's not to point fingers or anything, but it, it, sometimes, you know, people that clean their backyard, they think that, okay, we're, you know, that's, that's a place that they're gonna go through them. But no, it's just costing the, the store a lot of money, a lot of money. Okay, maybe we could ask the chief to check into that for us. Yeah, I have it down for a future agenda item. Okay, thank you. Anybody else that have anything? Okay, I, I, I do. I, I want to bring up something that we talked about tonight about going out and getting grants and stuff like that. Um, we had this one time, we had a, a, a goal session and uh, I think we ought to have a just a, something where we, we pick out like what what does the city need and then how can we go after it and if there's grants out there and listen and we do it as a team you know and or we do it as a whole group not just us and then we could learn how to do that a lot of us are, are new into this so we could go out and get grants we go out and find out where we get grants and we could have um, um, different people come in and talk to us about that how to how to do it and uh, do it right and I think that would help this council a lot if we could, and it would probably save us a lot of money too. Uh, Mayor okay. Ramsey, I have that down as a future agenda item, but if it would be okay, uh, we did that not that long ago with our grant writer. Uh -huh. And so it would be my suggestion. I think it's a great idea to do that. Um, but would you, you be okay with doing that when we do our goal setting for next fiscal year and then just combine it with what you want us to look at as far as grants so that it's all done at yeah, one time, could, your vision for next fiscal year? Too? Uh, we can ask if they can be present during that meeting. And that way we could see what they actually 
operas and stuff. Yeah, well, thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. We don't have any, oh yeah, we do have a closed session. Uh, conference with Labor Negotiations, Government Code 54957.6, City Negotiators, uh, Marissa Trejo, and City Attorney, Mario Zamora. Employee Organization, Coalinga Police Officers Association. Um, well, will there be anything to report after the uh, meeting? There will not be. There will be not. No. Okay, thank you everybody and have a good night. We're adjourned. Ha, <laughs> ha,